Welcome to The Link. I'm Brandon Johnson with Voight Johnson Real Estate. And today I have the pleasure to be joined by David Boyer with Jupiter Moon Ice Cream. Welcome and thanks for joining us. You bet. Good to be here. Good afternoon. Um, I want to get into the business a little bit where our podcast, we talk about central Minnesota business people, leaders. And so it's very um, informative with your grand opening here mm -hmm. this past week. But Tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, what you did before Jupiter Moon Ice Cream. Sure. So Jupiter Moon is relatively recent. Um, we started May of 2019 was, okay. was our initial date. So before that, and, and actually still, to be quite honest, um, I'm a UX designer, if you know what that is. Yep. Um, so I work for a fairly large corporation, and that's my day job. Okay. Um, I work there during the day and I work through um, building digital interfaces, making them better. I run a small team of designers. Um, one of the things that we've been doing, um, friends and I, is sort of in in passing, if you will, was, was sort of having a conversation about what's joyful. And uh, if you have that conversation for any length of time, ice cream comes up at some point. Sure. And so ice cream kind of spun into this world as well pretty, a while ago, let's say yeah. five, six years ago. Yeah. Um, in my you know, other world, I have a degree in meteorology. Oh wow! Um, and if we're going to go, at least if we're going to hit all the boxes, I have a degree in aviation as well. Not that that matters at all, yeah. but um, I have quite a varied background, and so I, I really enjoy um, adding new ex experiences, new 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 knowledge, new skills. It's it's sort of a you know I'm. Just always learning. It always, like, yeah. Right? Always, always finding something else to, to dig into. And so ice cream kind of started out as one of those things to dig into. Um, it's super fun in terms of um, creativity. Uh, it's quite simple to mix up a real basic ice cream. Um, but then once you start to learn the science of it, it's really fun to understand yeah. how it interacts and what you can, you can put together and knowing that certain combinations of certain sort of ingredients will have different... Um, characteristics once they are actually mixed sure. in ice cream. And so it's it's a super fun thing. Sure. Um, so yeah, that's sort of the background. Um, I've been in the St. Cloud area for, um, I guess, 30 years, which is kind of scary. I went to school here, um, but from Montana originally. Okay. What brought you to Minnesota? School? College? School, basically, yeah. yeah. I went to school here and just, uh, just never left. Um, and so you'd mentioned you're doing graphic design or what, I'm just more curious, what type of digital marketing or? Um, so user experience really, so UX. Um, yeah. We work with building, um, at least at this stage, a lot of interfaces, um, whether it be um, for applications or things of that nature. Um, but you know, the, the field of user experience is huge. It can mean a lot of different things. And so yep. depending on what we're working on, I've worked on everything from um, packaging into the UX world where, where we have investigated how a user is impacted by the package they receive in the mail. Yep. And so everything to a lot of really digital stuff. Yeah. We talked last time when we had a gentleman on here, we talked about the unboxing experience yeah. and that is, I think a little bit what you're alluding to. Yeah. It definitely is part of whatever you're getting, you know, it's, it's that mailbox experience is important. Yep. Um, so you're doing your, you said your daytime job and you right. just kind of have this itch, a little entrepreneurial <laughs> bug, or you just want to do something brings a little joy. <clears throat> yeah. Well, the joy is a key word here and it'll, it's, it's a thread that ties everything together. Yep. Um, the being not from this community, um, and, but being here, um, I wanted to make sure that I'm adding to it as opposed to just, you know, existing in it. Yep. Yep. Um, and, Talking through with some friends, you know, one day one of my friends was was at a stoplight and they looked over and there was a woman in the car next to her at the stoplight with a cigarette hanging out of her mouth with an ash about two inches long. Yeah. And then it, and, and then the other hand, she's holding an ice cream cone <laughs> and it's like 530 in the morning. <laughs> and she just like, what is that? And then it, and it dawned on her. It says, well, why not? You know, if, if this is making that lady happy at 5.30 in the morning, why not? And that's kind of, that was one of the seeds of the conversation. And then we, we started to spin a little more about, you know, I exist in the corporate world. The corporate world's fine, but yep. it can be pretty soulless. There's not a lot of uh, impactfulness that you, you can feel. It's really, it's really just like 
separated and tangential at best. It's just an existence. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it it's hard to under to to sort of really have anything tangible to grab onto that you can you can feel as a betterment. You you know, and it's that's that's kind of just the corporate world in general. You get yeah. you become a cog, if you will. Yeah. Um, and so starting to talk about where joy is, you know, that that came back to that. It came back to a few different things. One was was experiences, um, but the other one was space. Like, where is your, where are you happy? Um, it might be home, maybe not. It might be in your car. You know, it could be lots of different places. Um, and we sort of started talking about the the space as an area of joy, an all inclusive, happy, joyful, celebratory place. And what is that? Um, one of the other things in my background is um, on the local radio station, the college radio station, I've done a show for forever. Okay. Um, I haven't done it since the pandemic started, but yep. every Thursday morning for the last, I don't know, 15 years, I've been on the air doing a radio show, playing music. Yep. And so music is a big deal for me. And so a music venue is a place that's joyful for me, um, but maybe not other people. Yep. And so we started talking, well, what's a universal place of joy? And again, all roads lead back to ice cream. It just sort of is that embodiment of joy yeah and so when we started to mix the idea of like creativity of ice cream together with really it being a a vehicle for joy it's became something that sort of had to do and so that's 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 kind of where it started and so you made the decision to go into ice cream and so you say okay i'm going to do this then it's okay because you started out just on a mobile yeah so delivery service how did you initially just get the ball rolling into that? Well, so we, we wanted to do, the, the space was always important, but um, knowing that we couldn't do a space essentially financially out of the yeah. gate. And also just, you know, I still work my day job. Right, right. <laughs> and so um, the doing our bicycle. So if you visit our website or yeah. Which Facebook, is phenomenal, by the way, your thank website's you. amazing. Um, the, the cart, the bicycle cart, um, became sort of a proxy for that space. We, we spent a lot of time thinking about what the form factor was going to be. One we could afford, one we could handle, and one that would also sort of embody what we've been, we've been thinking about in terms yep. of joy. And that bicycle cart really sort of hit all those boxes. And um, the, the branding and the wrap on it, it just became sort of a mobile bubble of joy. Yep. And so last summer we did that at Summertime by George and Art Crawl and other events like that. And that was the deal. We rented a kitchen and had usually we're selling ice cream at least one day a week last summer. And it was super fun. Um, the response was, was really overwhelming in terms of it being happy. Nobody came up to us sad or left sad or angry. Everybody who came to talk to us is always happy. Um, one of my very favorite things to do now that I've been doing this is to ask people what their favorite flavor of ice cream is. So here, I'll do it right now. What's your favorite flavor of ice cream? I like the simple chocolate. Okay. All right. So now this is what I'm asking for. I'm not asking you really, I'm interested in your ice cream flavor because sure. it's always, it's varied what people like. It's, you wouldn't be surprised that it's not yep. really the same, but it's what you feel when you, when I asked you that, when I asked you that you smiled, everybody smiles. And everybody usually has some sort of memory of that flavor that is happy. And so asking people what their favorite flavor of ice cream became almost synonymous with what Jupiter Moon is. And it's, it's, it's joy. I, I think that's what you're articulating. What I'm hearing you say is it's what ice cream makes people feel. Yeah. And almost universally, like I'm, when you ask me what's my favorite type of ice cream and then we're dialoguing, I'm thinking back, why did I say chocolate? And I'm thinking about being a kid, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which brings joy to yeah. your point. And so what you're getting at is how does your brand, what you do impact people and bring, what does it make them feel? Right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, when we were talking to, you know, working up our branding working with our presentation in terms, of it's going to be, whether it's be the website or an ad or, what have you, um, we sort of talk about it in terms of uh, whimsical sophistication. Sure. And, and, and just, it's just happy. You know, yeah. it's, it, it, Jupiter Moon will always be a very happy, celebratory place where everybody's welcome. Yep. And that, um, I, I think that comes through with everything we do because it really is everything we do. Yep. How did you arrive at the name Jupiter Moon? How did that come to be? Well, so um, we have some good friends at NASA um, and they launched the, the Juno probe a few years ago. 
Okay. Um, and it went up and went around. Jupiter took some amazing pictures. You should go to NASA and check them out. There's some beautiful pictures from the Juno probe. And they discovered about 80 moons total right now around Jupiter. Um, and we have a pretty good authority that one of those is made of ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, if ours is made of cheese, you know, all dairy-based yep. moons, then there's got to be one there yep. <laughs> of ice cream. Um, seriously, though, we, we, it just, it's... The it's moon, part of who you are with the meteorology. Well, to, to some degree, to, the yeah. moon is the moon is an important thing. You know, it means things to different people personally. It's something that I've always gravitated to in terms of like whether the symbolic nature of the moon or what yep. have you. Um, but also, it reflects sort of this. Um, one of the taglines we often use is "Explorers Wanted." It sort of it it it, uh, it embodies that we're trying something new. We're going out on the limb. We're going to go try to discover new places that we haven't been to before. And this venture is definitely, definitely that for me anyway. So it, it sort of hit all those. And I have a bit of a, like a design background as well. Uh, one of the things I like to do when I, when I, when I was doing branding is it's really important for me when I name a company or, or come up with names or things that it has a, the ability to conjure an image in your mind immediately. Um, years ago, I ran a little web design firm that's defunct now that was my own called 26 Tigers. Very similar thing. You know, it, it doesn't necessarily mean anything, but yep. it immediately conjures an image in somebody's mind. So becoming branding becomes, it's easy to remember, it feels good, or it fe has a feeling of, with it of some sort. Yep. And so Jupiter Moon is very much that as well. And I guess lastly, it just rolls off the tongue nicely. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so you, we mentioned earlier before we get started here, when you're creating, you have a branding design background, obviously, um, but you uh, hired Gaslight Creative. They kind of created a little bit or you worked yeah, we, we with started, them? Yeah, we started with a, a really rough idea that I tried to work up. And um, when you design for yourself, it becomes, you become super critical and it, it overwrought really sure. fast. Sure. And so it was just one of those things like, yeah, we need to hand this off. And so I handed it off and... And they really just hit it out of the park. It was, yeah. it was. They did a really good job with it, um, and it's, it's fantastic. You know, yeah. it's like high fives all around when we yeah. saw it. So. It is. <laughs> it's, um, it's impactful. Uh, getting back to so you started up. You're going to events with the bike and that sort of thing. Where did the transition? Did you always envision going into a brick and mortar space? Or walk us through that process of... Yeah, we, of, al we always imagine the space. Yep. Um, because it, it was... I mean, the bike is very cool, and the bike will always be part of us. Yep. Um, but it was... It really was to create that space, you know. Um, another way to think about it is, like, when you travel, it's really easy to find spaces that when you enter them, you just feel... You feel something. What, yep. It's whether it's relaxed or happy or what have you. And, and in your own hometown, it's sometimes hard to find those places, whether it's just from... The repetitive nature of there's only so much in your hometown um, or what have you. There just isn't a lot of those spaces in central yeah. Minnesota. And so we wanted to build a space that was joyful and celebratory. And, and, and really that's, ice cream has really become the vehicle for that. Yeah. And so um, were, you, were you searching or looking for a long time? Um, I, I wouldn't say like searching. I would say keeping my eyes open yep. for a long time. Um, the space we're in is in St. Joe. Um, it's where Bad Habit yep. really started um, yep. before they, they moved a uh, block and a half away. Um, and I, I've known about the space. I knew the Bad Habit actually still was leasing it um, two years ago when we started. But they were just so successful. They just hadn't. They all grew it. Yep. They, they, they didn't need it anymore. And it was ready, it was ready for subways, but nobody was, was doing it yet. Yep. And we were, to be honest, we weren't ready. You know, we've only been in this for a year. And so it wasn't in our game plan to jump into a brick and mortar so quickly. And to be honest, we had actually envisioned doing downtown St. Cloud. Yep. Um, part of that, if we're gonna be part of this community, I wanna add to it. And I think downtown St. Cloud really needs some, yep. some, some oomph. So um, I guess one of the things that's in, just as a, as a back of my mind is that if we ever do another store, we'll probably put one down there. Yep. Um, at uh, any rate, uh, when that space became, uh, it, their lease was coming to an end. And so sure. the building owner started reaching out and he gave me a call. And, and so we talked and it just became something that seemed like, huh, this is one of those opportunities that you probably shouldn't pass up. Yeah. And it, it, things just sort of like, yeah, this is just too good. To, to not give it a whirl at this point. Yep. Um, that was early in the year and then COVID happened. Yeah. 
And so we were hoping to open in, well, probably the way things would have. Did you sign a lease prior to COVID? I, I was oh. like two days, three days away yeah. from signing the lease. And it, it, I didn't. And so we, and we just sort of paused. Yep. And then midsummer we signed the lease. And okay. So we've been building out since July. Uh, Mid-July we started working on it and yep. then opened in, I guess our first real day for business was October 9th. Okay. And that was the lock-up window. Yep. Which I had mentioned, we, family and I, we went there, I want to say it was October 10th. It would have been right about mm -hmm. um, the first half, first week in October. And um, downtown St. Joe's really got something going for it. I think, especially with the new Creole restaurant and Bad yep. Habit, um, you have the La, you have a couple restaurants, mm -hmm. um, Bella Luciano, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's a draw where it gets people there and then you just kind of bounce and bounce. And that's what we did. We went out to eat dinner and then we ended up at Jupiter moon for ice cream. So I think what's the vibe down there is excellent too. I think it's right. really benefiting everybody. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's definitely a, you know, everybody's benefiting from, from it down there. And so it, it, it to have that opening was, it was just, like I said, it was just too, it was too good to walk away and yep. say, no, we can't do that. Like, no, we have to do that. Yeah. And it has, you know, we have a patio and indoor and outdoor seating, um, a fairly large space, um, which was beneficial for COVID. So we can, we can put enough people in there and still keep six feet apart. Yep. Um, and those are all things that um, just really, it's a great spot. So it appears that you just looking in through the walk-up window, you did a lot of renovations, correct? We did more than I thought we were going to do. I suppose that's pretty common. Yeah. Um, you know, Bad Habit was in there and they had a, a I guess, a brewery area, a brewing yep. area, which had commercial or kitchen-like tile in it. Um, and then a, then a seating area. Um, but making ice cream, we sort of, we move up in terms of regulatory sort of stuff um, to a, a definitely a few notches above what a brewery holds. Um, and so we are licensed in front of the house is uh, Stearns County Health Department. Back of the house though is the Minnesota Department of Ag. And so there's there's a lot of uh, compliance you have to, to meet back there. And so one of the things we had to do is we had to enclose the kitchen entirely. So it wasn't sure. enclosed with, with that habit. And, and enclosed meant, you know, uh, we, were, we wanted a, a nice swinging door, which, but then we had to seal it, it has to be a sealed door. Um, and so those things like that went into play and then yep. there was no equipment, like there was no freezers. There actually, there was a walk-in cooler that they kept their kegs in that we still have. So we have a gigantic fridge, but yep. there was no and you, So you're making all your ice cream on site. We make it all. Premises. Yep. yep. We make it all right there. We've been rent renting a kitchen up until now, um, which was fine, um, but just way too small for our needs. Yep. How many, at any given time, how many different flavors of ice cream do you have? About 20. Wow. Uh, um, we keep 20. We're, that's, a, that's our goal. Um, I think we have 19 on the board right now. With um, We're having a little bit of, tr we're, <laughs> we're mixing form factors of tubs and cartons inside the freezers and they limit our space a little bit. When we, sure. we get all uniform, we'll, we'll be able to bump it up a couple more. Um, but yeah, about 20 and we're always going to be, there'll probably be about 12 of those 12 to 15 that will probably always be on the menu. And then there'll yep. be some that we all we rotate. I think right now we're running, run our last bit of cinnamon apple pie, and then we'll replace it with one called, uh, what do we, what do we call it? Solstice spice holiday. So like seasonal yeah. ice creams almost? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And it's, it's got a bit of nutmeg. It's definitely a, a, a holiday sort of flavor. Yep. Now, are you doing, because there's, from a business philosophy approach, are you doing, it's very apparent you're focusing on the customer experience when you're there, which is important, obviously. Are you also doing, or do you have the vision where you can buy Jupiter Moon ice cream in the stores, too? Like, um, to some degree, wholesale is a, is a, different, di is a different beast, for yeah. sure. Um, and it requires lots of production, like more than we probably do to, to the margins are so thin. Yeah. And we do a little bit of wholesale right now. Um, you can get our ice cream at backwards bread. Okay. Um, and then there's a dairy service in town called dairy to you that delivers. Okay. And they carry our ice cream as well. Um, and so those are the two areas that we, we are doing. And then we just sell it out of the freezer at the store as well. Yep. Um, we might add it a few other places. Um, one of our plans pre COVID was to put little freezers in the breweries. Yep. And so you could pick up a cup there for the kids yep. and things. And that will probably come back around. Yeah. Um, but we didn't do it obviously this year because of that. Um, for a while, um, the Cider House in St. Joe had our ice cream as well. Did they? Yeah. Okay. I think that's smart because 
I mean, there's two approaches on the spectrum, right? You can go and try and compete Ben and Jerry's and be the national, but you, like you said, that's a whole different thing. But to be the yeah. local powerhouse brand. Well, there is no ice cream in central Minnesota. I mean, yeah. they're, they're soft serve, but there is no locally made ice cream. Yep. Um, the ones that are here, there's one in the mall, Fudge and Delicious, and they carry an ice cream made by a company out of Madison, Wisconsin. Yep. And it is actually fantastic ice cream um, made by a company called Chocolate Shop. They make really good ice cream. Um, and so I don't knock them, but it's not, it's not made here. Yep. Um, I'm just thinking as we're talking here now, it's kind of, and I don't know if you've thought about this, I'd just be curious to get your take, but a phenomenon that's just kind of, and maybe because it's my kids are that age now in the 10, 11, 12, 13, but the, um, traditional ice cream truck has really kind of been reborn. There's a couple mm -hmm. in the area here. I know in the Annandale area, there's one. You're starting to see a little rebirth of that. Have you been paying attention or do you have any ideas along? I mean, some of it is COVID driven this summer for sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they're, they're out there. I mean, it's, it's um, the food truck sort of culture um, is, has been on the rise. It's um, the local regulations in Central Minnesota haven't been very good for food trucks here. In fact, Sock Rapids is... I've, I saw that. that. Yeah, really, really made it difficult. Um, so there's... But in general, it's that I think it's part of that, part of that yeah. rise, you know. And, and we looked at it, too. You know, we have the bike. Um, we chose the bike because it was, uh, you know, essentially our advanced hobby last year. And yeah. so it, it, it fit that well. Um, to do ice cream on any sort of scale, you would need a truck or a trailer. Um, you need to be able to scoop ice cream, you need to be able to store it in it. Um, then all the things that have to go with it, all the accoutrements of like a hand wash sink and all that. And it pretty much, you need a trailer to make it worth your while. Yep. Yep. So your official grand opening was last week. Mm -hmm. What, how many employees do you have? What went into that event or just tell us a little bit how it uh, went? Sure. It went very well. Um, I mean, it, it's hard to know because we opened an ice cream shop on a snowy day. Yeah. That's not ideal in the fall. You know, the plan was to open on a nice warm day in the spring. Um, uh, but it went well. It went well. We 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 were too full at times. We had to actually have, uh, have some people leave. You know, like we need to, like it was just too full for COVID, and so that's a I mean good good problem to have. Yep. Um. So we 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 uh I think we did well in that day. Um. Uh. To prep for it, we have about I think twelve, um, staff right now. Okay. Most of them are are Bennies from. Sure. Um. And uh, do you have like a head? You know, I use the brewery analogy like a head brewer do you have like a I have a restaurant manager um yeah. a good friend of mine from college um she's she's uh my one full-time employee okay um and so she's she's running the essentially front of the house and allowing me to have my day job basically yep. is, is what she's doing um and so it's uh and then we have a bunch of part-timers sure um we'll probably do some stratification as we sort of get more mature and understand and find out who we can it can be like a shift lead and things like that. But right now it's just, it's just a bunch of, a bunch of college kids and a couple of high school kids. That yeah. Us out. What's, um, because I'm assuming this is when, before you had the restaurant, um, it was more summer, more seasonal business. So this mm -hmm. is going to be right. The first true winter and a little bit of unknown there. Oh, a tremendous amount. Yeah. It's going to be a grind. Um, I'm, I'm, if there's anxiety, it's happening. If there is anxiety happening, it's about yeah. winter. Um, it's like, it's what are we going to do to be able to get through winter? Because um, come, you know, a couple of things. There's a couple of knowns, constants. Uh, one is after the holidays, especially January, restaurants in general suffer right. because everybody's on the resolutions both for food <laughs> and money. Right, right, right. And so that's a hard time. Also, it's going to be cold. And so yep. it's, it's going to be a tough time for ice cream in January. Um, the other problem I'm going to run into is... Most of my staff are college kids who go home on break. And so it's, I'm working through that right now. Um, and then the third one is it's just, you know, I, I, there's a mental switch that happens for ice cream in the winter um, that I have to like push through to like get people to flip that yeah. switch that it's okay to eat ice cream in the winter. Um, and it is, absolutely. Um, and there's a few things we're doing there. So we, we have affogados in the menu, which is uh, ice cream with coffee. I was going to say, do you have any coffees, mm -hmm. hot cocoa, any of that? We have coffee, just basically drip coffee from Kinder Coffee. Okay. Or excuse me, kinder coffee. I do it wrong every time. Kinder <laughs> coffee, um, and uh, so just just drip coffee there, and 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 that's on purpose. You know, local blend is a fantastic coffee shop just down the street. Um, if you need a quick cup of coffee, come see us. If you yeah. want something a little more embellished, espresso or something, head on down there and don't. Um, 
the but mixing that with a with a scoop of ice cream is super delicious um and the coffee is kinder coffee is um plug for them amazing yeah. um and then uh we're also probably going to do soup um just as an easy easy thing to do um a little for easy. like a la- lunches or? yeah just soup and a soup and a, yeah. a roll basically very simple nothing fancy just a Probably one or two soups, um, yeah. depending on, on sort of how the response is. Um, certainly not our bread and butter, um, but part of the Another pot. reason to get people to come in the door. Yeah, just if you need a quick one, and soup and ice cream is a great little lunch snack. Yeah. Um, and the other thing we're toying with, and I hope that we can pull it off, we're going to actually try this afternoon, is we're going to start making ice cream pies. Um, so for the holidays, we'll hopefully put out, if you want to order an ice cream pie, um, we'll, we'll probably we'll do two flavors in there with a little bit of, uh, you know, and probably in a graham cracker crust, um, easy thing, um, delicious. And we can yeah, produce I think that's those. a great idea. Just having a few more, the traditional ice cream, obviously, but mm-hmm. other ways for people to interact, especially in the winter. But I think obviously getting through COVID and the whole restaurant business dynamic, but is the idea just kind of a little bit of a coffee shop vibe? A little bit of no, no, hangout? no, no. It's it's a, it's an ice cream shop first and foremost. Okay. Um, you know, um, we may do more coffee in the future, but it's it's really not part of the business plan. Um, okay. It's another investment in equipment, and um, really, it's it's come get ice cream, come have a have a little place to to sit and such. And if we can we can do a little bit more in the lunch to get us through winter, that's great. Yeah. But it's it's never going to be. It's going to be focused on the ice cream. Yep. And so that's that's really the plan. Like we don't do Sundays right now either. And that's not just because we just haven't spun them up yet. But we soon will do that as well. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Um, what's the... So you mentioned, obviously I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but possibly additional locations down St. Cloud. Is that always kind of out there as a possibility? Yeah. I know you just got to get through and establish yeah, a year I, or two I, here. But. I want to get through this year. But yeah, that's... Um, I mean, I... I want I want this to be my real job, okay. Right? And so, um, really, the the way to do that is just quantity. And so, I'll probably need you two shops to, to to really make this you know, a yep. thing that that becomes replaces a pretty good corporate job. Yeah. Well, I think what you have going for you is, you know, whether it was intentional or not, um, with your grand opening, you already had brand recognition. Mm-hmm. People knew Jupiter Moon Ice Cream, so you're not. From an awareness standpoint, you're not starting from square one, correct? Right, we're not. It's just now getting a lot of people know we have a shop. Yep. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we, we did farmers market this year. We're um, at um, both St. Cloud and St. Joe. Okay. Um, we did them alternating weeks, so we were every other week we we're at depending on which one. Yep. I um, mean, we told everybody, that, and so there's the, that that helped, um, but a lot of people still see us as the bike, so that's it's one thing we need to overcome. Yeah. Well, I think you'll get there. It, yeah. It, it won't take that much time to once people Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. become aware of it. But um, I think there's the brand recognition is already there. For sure. Um, And then we talked a little bit about just kind of the um, camaraderie with all the St. Joe business owners and talk a little bit, because I think that's unique a little bit is how rather than rivals, which maybe that's too strong of a word, but I think knowing a few of the people it's all about the collective benefit of everybody, right? Absolutely, yeah, and it's it's um it's a really nice, strong community um, in terms of its its small business sort of support, and, yep. and it's and it's both from the city and the businesses themselves, and then the people like Mary Bruno. Um, well, she runs the same job. I mean, she'll put on events t- to include everybody. Exactly, exactly, and so it's it's just a nice little community. And I think. The size of it is how is part of it too. You know, it's 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 a tiny little town, and so um, it's it's a little easier to corral everybody together yep. and sort of get them all sort of lifting all all at once, as opposed to individuals sort of yep. zipping off on their own. Um, you know, it's it's a. Uh, I think that vibe was definitely part of the reasons that we we did it. You know, um, the or, or chose that spot as as opposed to you know waiting another year and seeing what came yep. about. Um, I think if, if, yeah, it was definitely part of the reason. Yep. Yeah. Um, what are your seven days a week? We're open Tuesday through Sunday. Tuesday through Sunday. So six days a week. Monday's closed. Um, basic hours, 12 to 8 right now, 11 to 7 on Sunday. Okay. My guess is those might change a little bit as we get a little more understanding. Like, 
Um, we're discovering nobody comes in until really about two. So yeah. we, we might ratchet things back. Um, and uh, Sunday, we might just do 12 to 6 yeah. as opposed to early at 11. So th within that variation. But I suppose Fridays, Saturdays, you might get even a later. Potentially. Potentially. You know. Yeah. It just depends. I mean, it's it's this is not ice cream season. So everything right, right now is just a little bit like, who knows? <laughs> yep. So you're kind of learning on the fly. Oh, for sure. There's a lot of it. Like, yeah, and there's a ton of learning on the fly. I mean, one of the things that with the bike last year, we prepackaged all our ice cream. Sure. So in the kitchen, we'd put it in cups and pints. Um, the reason for that was it allowed the bike to be really simple. We didn't have to have a hand washing sink. We didn't have to do all the sort of... Uh, bits and pieces that the health department wants to do yep. safe food handling because yep. it's already packaged and sealed uh, we did all that in the kitchen good way to do it adds a lot of labor in the kitchen we hand scooped five thousand some cups last summer oh, wow um and those take a long time yeah <laughs> um this year we're actually scooping ice cream now out of out of a dipping cabinet i had not made a waffle cone and scooped it into an ice cream cone until you know, a few weeks before we opened the sure, store. So, sure. I mean, with any sort of consistency. Um, so this is new for us too. And now we're making waffle cones and ice cream and, and it's, it's a, uh, the ice cream's the same. It's in fact, it's even better. I think now because we're using, um, we've invested in better equipment. Sure. To, 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 and so we have a, a bigger, better ice cream machine now. And we're also serving it in a, in a essentially ready to, you know, it was ready to eat in those little cups, but those cups were served, um, in that cart and they were on dry ice yep. and that dry ice is super cold. It's like 197 degrees below zero. So you get a, cu a cup of ice cream out of that cart. You needed to wait two or three minutes for it to sort of warm up and become sure. something that was more, more uh, you could scoop in and get your spoon in into it. Um, now you're getting an ice cream cone. That's, you know, the perfect temperature right, you and it's, you get that instant gratification. Yeah. Well, David, thank you for joining us. Absolutely. Uh, how can people downtown St. Joe, um, if people want online website, you can visit the website, jupitermooniceCream.com. Um, and actually we're going to have a new website in a, probably three weeks. Okay. We're working on it right now. Um, uh, but the best place to keep up to date on like current stuff is Instagram and Facebook. Instagram. Yeah. Just Jupiter Moon Ice Cream. Yeah. Jupiter Moon Ice Cream. You'll find us on both like Instagram and Facebook. Same one. Yep. Um, and we like, we'll post new flavors there. We'll post any, you know, events coming up, things of that nature. So, yeah. Well, I, I'm excited for the ice cream pie. That's something I think my family and I enjoy. So that was news to me. I'm excited to hear that. But other than that, I appreciate you joining us. Yeah, and thanks for inviting me. wish you all the best. Thanks. Great. Come get some ice cream. Will do. <laughs> In December. <laughs> <laughs>